Welcome to another GoodyWeer.com comparison video. My name is Marcus. And this is Peter. And today we're going to compare the Cobalt Vox against the Barnes & Noble Nook tablet. They're both 7 inches. They both have the same resolution at 1024 by 600. And they are also running the same version of Google Android. They are running Android 2.3. The big difference with the screen is that the Nook tablet uses an IPS LCD, so you get about 170 uh, PPI. The Kobo Vox actually uses the same type of um, LCD uh, displays found in a lot of instruments on airplanes. Now if you figure that you are flying above the clouds in most cases, that you're going to get a lot of unfiltered sunlight. And so one of the cool things about the Kobo Vox is it actually performs a little bit better in direct sunlight uh, than the Nook tablet. Things really change when you start looking at things underneath the hood. The Nook tablet is running a dual core 1 gigahertz processor, while the Kobo Vox is puttering along at a single core 800 megahertz processor. Uh, storage capacity on the Nook tablet is 16 gigs and you can expand it up to 32 gigs via the micro SD, whereas the Kobo Vox has 8 gigs and you can also expand it up to 32 gigs as well. They both have Wi-Fi and weight, how do they feel to you in terms of, uh, you know, holding them and um, what, what weighs heavier, what weighs lighter? The Kindle, uh, I'm s hold on. The Nook tablet is actually a little bit heavier by, I don't know, say 40 grams or just over an ounce. But um, honestly, holding the, either of these two devices up for an extended period of time or just the just a single single time lift up, uh, you're not going to experience any differences. They're basically identical. Uh, I, I do find the Barnes & Noble is a little bit nicer to hold and you don't have this piano black finish fingerprinting up as you hold it you have a very nice matte metal feel so um, I prefer the Barnes & Noble just for all-around reading and just usability yeah I mean if you look at the exact grams the Nook tablets 450 while the Kobo Vox is only 402 so it's a little bit lighter they both read the same types of uh, ebook formats I think the Nook tablet reads a few more because it does uh, docx xls ppt and text while the Kobo Vox really only does EPUB and a PDF right out of the box Peter here is going to show you the hardware uh, differences giving you a 360 orientation of uh, how the devices are, are laid out and everything in between. Alright, let's start off with the Cobalt Vox. You see that it's a straight up uh, flat surface. They have the glass that carries all the way through until the edge of the device. There's no hardware buttons on the front. There are some software driven buttons via capacitive touch at the bottom. There's a back, a menu or a right click, and a home button. Moving over to the right, you have a single speaker on the top. Um, not a fan of the single speaker, but I am a fan of where they put it. So as as long as it's not flat on its back, that's um, that's that's okay with me. Power button at the top for turning your device on and off and locking your device. On the left, we have volume up and down, and a micro SD card. On the bottom, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and we have a micro USB slot. Moving over to the Barnes & Noble tablet, you have a hardware button on the front that is this uh, iconic end they've had on pretty much every one of their devices. It does uh, it physically click, so it is uh, not software driven. You have a power button on the left. On the right we have volume up and down. On the top we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a microphone. And on the bottom we have a micro USB. Moving over to the back, if you're wondering where the SD card is, it is right here. It's a micro SD. And this is probably something I don't really agree with, is a speaker. It is flat on the back. So whether it's in a case, on a table, in your hands portrait, or in your hands landscape, you're pretty much always covering that speaker. So. Uh, not a big fan of that. Other than that, it's a very nice design. Uh, I like the matte metal. It won't leave any fingerprints. 
this little uh, stri uh, uh, there's a cutoff here so you can put little book straps through and cell phone straps and all that and um, other than that uh, yeah they have the same size screen although this one does look a little bit bigger but that is only because they have a different border yeah so I mean they both have their pros and cons I think I like the Nook tablet a little bit more in terms of the overall hardware design and the form factor I think that the Kobo Vox it pretty well looks like the original Samsung Galaxy Tab and um, yeah I would say hardware wise I'm, I'm more of a fan of the Nook tablet so it, suffice to say that the Nook tablet blows the Vox away in terms of processor speed and internal memory. Uh, how does that really carry over to the ebook experience? Because you really, as a lot of really low spec devices have proved, you can read books on it. So let's look at pretty well the library. And when a lot of people like to load in their own books, and so we put a few books on uh, via the the micro SD card uh, that came with our device and so instead of using a third-party program to read the book we could actually import these books to the main Kobo shelf so we're just gonna press the settings button and you can see it's a little bit unresponsive uh, import content and it's gonna import the content and you can see these are all of the books we're just gonna import them all and press yes So for people that are wondering on how to do it, this is exactly how you do it. I have noticed that there is a little bit of trouble pressing the capacitive exterior buttons here, the home, the settings, and the back, than it is to press the actual screen. The screen is very responsive, um, very easy to touch, but when it comes to these buttons, you've got to be a little bit patient because sometimes it just doesn't register. Yeah, and uh, with the Nook uh, tablet, if you want to import books, it's pretty easy just to put them uh, via Windows Explorer, Caliber, or other programs. They should be appearing right on your main shelf, but if they're not, you can click on My Stuff, My Files, and then kind of find books and then manually load them on here. So let's uh, compare uh, the ebook reading experience. We're going to compare Night Road by uh, Kristen Hanna on both devices. So we both pretty well hit that at the same time. Looks like the Nook tablet loaded the book a little faster. Okay, so here's how both, bo uh, both things display the text. You can see that the Nook tablet font looks a little bit different, but that's just pr probably because we did some presets if we single tap you get to call up a screen here and on the Vox you have to press the settings menu let's uh, check out some of the options that we have here so if we want to change our fonts and things like that I'll press text uh, what do you have over there we'll press the uh, settings button here and then we'll go over to fonts and there we are so what type of font sizes do you have on your unit all right, well, we have font size in the form of this bar, so in a way it's a little bit more customizable than the uh, Nook tablet, only because you have about, you know, 30 or 40 different points in which you can uh, put the slider bar into. Uh, you also have font styles. You have, I would say, about 11, it looks like. So we'll try to just go with um, something simple here. And then uh, we'll go to display. And we have brightness, night mode. You can turn night mode on and off if you're having trouble reading the um, the text. And then you have the layout where you can do a bind. Uh, you can turn notifications on, stuff like that. Okay. So I think I am a pretty big fan on how the Nook tablet is laid out. It may not have the amount of font sizes that you can increase than the Kobo Vox, but you saw with the Vox it didn't update the, t the text in real time whereas uh, with the Nook tablet it does and so yeah, it gives you a little bit more visual cues again they both have both have the same amount of fonts that you can choose I would say the Nook tablet wins a little bit more in terms of it does have the night mode as well but it also has a ton of different other modes as well because when you're reading um, under low light conditions sometimes that default white background could 
really sort of eat at your eyes after a while and so having the options to change the color of it I think will really benefit customers you can also change your line space and margins and that's something that the Vox um, I believe can do can it no I don't believe it has margins line spacing or um, anything of the sort you what you see is what you get here okay so ebook reading experience I would probably say that the Nook tablet wins out because of the sheer amount of customization uh, how does page turn speeds and everything uh, come into play maybe let's try uh, doing it on account three one two three one two three oh I'm sorry let me get over to some text here just so we're not confused here we go okay so it's on account three one two three one two three one two three so well basically what you're seeing is that this is in terms of the next page appearing this one is technically winning only because it doesn't have the animation you're simply moving on to the next page whereas right now on the nook tablet we've set the animations to on um, if it were to be the exact same there would be no real difference the only thing right now is that you get this kind of peak on uh, the Nook tablet, whereas this you don't. It just goes to the next page. Okay, so one of the benefits that the Kobo Vox has is that it has achievements and it also has things like reading life. So you can see here that we have our notifications. We get some statistics on uh, how long it's taken us to read the book, page turns, and everything like that. You can also see awards that we have uh, read or gotten here. So it's kind of cool that they've done a lot of social media aspect and in the reading experience. Uh, they also have a cool program uh, called uh, Kobo Pulse. And we can maybe see that during the user guide. So you can see Kobo Pulse basically tells you how many people are reading the book as you are, as well as people uh, commenting on it. Uh, this is a lot of people haven't commented on this yet, but 240 people are reading it now. I think that this is kind of neat, and this is something that the Nook tablet hasn't done. The Nook tablet, when you read it, almost feels like a solitary experience while uh, the Kobo Vox is making read reading social. So I would say that the Nook tablet probably has more features to customize your overall reading experience. I think though that the Vox brings to the table uh, unique social elements to your experience and so it kind of balances out. It depends really what you want to do. Do you really want to just read a book by yourself and then that's it? Or do you want to be a little bit more social? Do you want to you know, do kind of quaint little things like awards, achievements, uh, chat with other people reading the book in uh, real time, you know, vote up, vote down comments. It's pretty well a, a personal preference. Uh, how do you feel about it? I really like uh, all the features that the Kobo Vox has to do with the actual reading aspect of the device. Um, I wish the Nook did a little bit more. This has Pulse, Reading Life, Awards. It tells you how far, how much percentage of a book you've completed. It's kind of like more incentive to keep reading. So I really like what they're doing with it. Yeah, some people need that kick in the butt, you know, in order to uh, read. And I think that Pulse uh, does uh, a pretty good job at it. Let's look at the keyboards as we're typing here. So overall, I know, Peter, that you have a lot of Android experience. You pretty well exclusively use Android phones. What do you think about the two uh, keyboard layouts? I think the fact that they're the same size screen, that the Nook tablet is utilizing a lot more of it to their um, advantage. You can see that they have the keyboard up and down button so you could minimize or maximize the keyboard. They both have shifts, but this one goes on to using a dot .com button and an at button whereas this has an oversized space button and all the buttons seem a little too large you don't really need them to be that large this is making a lot more use of the screen okay so let's just look at the overall uh, web experience here just uh, load up uh, the goodyreader.com slash blog so we both are here on the home page of our blog and again it's goodyreader.com slash blog. You can see for yourself the way that the screens uh, differ here. I would say probably the Nook uh, tablet and uh, the Kobo Vox show about the same amount of uh, data on uh, the first page here. How does scrolling uh, come into play if we're scrolling up and down? Ooh. Oh, 
Oh, no. Oh, look at that. It's a little bit laggy. And as you can tell, the page is fully loaded, is no longer loading. Um, with a graphic heavy page like our blog here, there doesn't seem to be any problem on the Nook tablet. But with the Kobo Vox, it's not registering a couple of my swipes. Uh, everything's kind of blocking and blurring. It really seems that the uh, lack of RAM and processing speed are taking a toll on uh, at least web experience here. Yeah, I mean, uh, just to give you a sense, uh, the Kobo Vox has 512 MB of RAM and uh, the Nook tablet has uh, 1 gig. Let's uh, try pinching and zooming here, just see how that does. Almost a night and day difference. I'm pinching and zooming and it's uh, somewhat scrolling down at the same time. I'm not sure why. That looks painful. It, it is. Um, it, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's it's not too it's not too accurate I should say. All right, let's uh, try uh, YouTube, because this is some, a lot of people always ask us to test uh, videos and things like that uh, in here. So let's uh, let's scroll down to the Samsung Galaxy Tab video here. This is on the main page. I'm not sure what happened with uh, this. A security warning came up, and uh, let's just go back. Considering we're both on the same Wi-Fi network, it really looks like the Vox is <laughs> really behind on everything here. I am uh, not even sure what's going on at this point. Let's just go back to the blog and see if we can start from a fresh slate. And this is uncensored here at Goody Reader. We want to show you for your uh, purchasing purposes which uh, device would be better for you. So we're showing it uncut here. Yeah, scrolling is absolutely painful on uh, the Vox. So here's our, our YouTube videos here. I is believe it... this is the same one. Yep, here we go. Okay. This one just showed up. So we're just going to press play. And we pretty well hit play at the same time, hey? Yeah. This, there we go. This one's starting to catch up, but you can see that it is in no way f uh, fluid or it's not even flowing very well. We're on the exact same Wi-Fi connection as these two devices. We're on the exact same Wi-Fi connection we've used for every one of our 300 review videos. Um, you can see for yourself, uh, this one's trucking along. This one, absolutely no problem. You can even scroll up and down while watching. This one... Yeah, I mean, uh, the the buffering and the frame rate on the Vox is abysmal. On the Nook tablet, it's pretty fast. So overall web experience, uh, Kobo Vox versus the Nook tablet? Scrolling, pinching and zooming, double tapping, uh, bringing up YouTube videos, absolutely 100% to the Nook tablet. I concur. So uh, one of the last things uh, that I want to show you is uh, the applications. And I would say that the Vox almost wins out because it's so easy to side load your own applications in. You can either use uh, the default get a jar, which is uh, on your applications list, but you could also side load in uh, other markets. You could see here on the Vox that we have our um, Nook app, Amazon Kindle app. We have a lot of apps. Uh, loaded on our device and it was simple as um, copying the main um, APK file to our memory and then uh, loading it via one of the file explorers uh, that we did. It seems as though that you're having a lot of trouble here. What's going on? I'm not actually quite sure. A bunch of the buttons aren't really registering my actions and I'm just trying to get to an app list here but looks like it doesn't like me scrolling so I'll leave it as is so you can see all the apps we have here. Okay, so really easy to install apps and side loading applications on the Nook uh, Touch or sorry, the Nook tablet is not that easy. What you actually have to do is you actually have to, uh, via the web, 
visit a link that will manually install the file on your device. You can't put them on an SD card and load them in. You can't just put them on your device memory and load them in. Um, so what we've done at Goody Reader is we, on our main blog page, we put together a comprehensive Essential Nook tablet uh, app link. And I don't know if it's on our main page right now. Here it is. And so what this allows you to do is download applications uh, right to your uh, Nook tablet. So if we wanted to install, um, say, ES File Explorer, we can click on that and it would bring you to a page where you can download it. If we wanted to, say, download something like, uh, like the Astro File Viewer, a lot of these uh, files can be sort of one click installed uh, right to your device. And so what you need to do is just like find uh, websites that offer sort of like instant downloads and things like that. So you can see it's starting to download. Go home. In any case, it's it's downloading, and once it uh, finishes uh, downloading, you'll get sort of like a prompt saying it's installed, and you'll be able to install it uh, to your device. And so uh, this is cool because it doesn't it doesn't make you have to rely on the Barnes Noble Nook app app market, but you can install alternative apps and things like that on it. So I would say overall. I like the fact that the Vox has a bit more of an open ecosystem. All you have to do is just like copy apps to your main memory, put them on your SD card, and load them up right away. One of the drawbacks of both, both devices is that they don't really have great file manager programs installed on there. So uh, the first app I recommend that you install is uh, Astro, Astro or uh, ES File, and that way you can uh, find content on your device a little bit more. So you can see exactly like Kindle, Nook, all that type of stuff. Again, to load apps on here, you need to load them directly on a web page. So uh, overall, Nook tablet versus Kobo Vox, what are your impressions? Um, I like the Kobo Vox for the reading life, the um, uh, the awards you get, the more incentive to read by showing you your progress through all your books. Really nice. I wish they had the Cobovox with the Nook's internals because dual core one gigahertz processor, one gig of RAM versus single core eight hundred megahertz with five twelve MB RAM. You're obviously gonna want to go to the guy who has got more under the hood. Um, it's a shame that Cobovox can't perform up to par with the Nook tablet as they are in the same kind of category of color e-reader tablets. I wish it could do a lot more with what it has, but I would probably have to give it to the Nook tablet overall. Yeah, overall, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, the Nook tablet. It's fast, it's robust, it really doesn't, um, you know, you don't really have like a ton of different things that are making your experience negative. You saw with the Cobovox, even just pressing the home key sometimes messed up. The web browsing experience is absolutely subpar. I would say the only advantage that the Cobovox has over the Nook tablet is the social media aspect of, of reading, being able to um, highlight words, you know, send them to Facebook and Twitter, uh, win awards. Uh, Kobo Pulse is actually very cool and innovative. So I think Kobo's on a cutting edge with the social media aspect, whereas the Nook tablet really just blows it away uh, hardware specs and uh, your overall uh, experience here so um, you can see for yourself you know by clicking here you can see the things that we've downloaded you once you have once you download it you have to make your uh, tablet be able to install things from non-secure sources We'll show you in a future tutorial on how to do all that. So uh, what you've seen here is a comparison video with the Cobo Vox versus the Nook tablet for goodyreader.com. My name is Marcus. This is Peter. Everybody take care.